come in, come in. Ah, oh, nice to see you again. Do come in. Make yourself at home. I'm back again from my various travels and um, seeking a few home comforts. Have a have a seat. Now, I've got a lovely pipe out on this occasion, which um, uh, it's quite a rare one. It's it's Peterson. You can see with a lovely silver binding. If you if you look at it closely, I don't know if you can see. There's very beautiful, sort of Celtic style, fine engraving on the silver band. And then this, um, as it were, faux amber mice mouthpiece. This is, um, it's number 93 out of a limited edition of 135 pipes that were made um, by Peterson, actually to celebrate one of their neighbours. The, there's a famous old, uh, old pipe and tobacco shop on Grafton Street, that magical street in Dublin. And... Um, called James Fox and when they had their 135th anniversary they commissioned Peterson to make these pipes in fact you can probably see it better this is as it were the Peterson master book this is Mark Irwin and Gary Malmberg's massive magnum opus about Peterson every conceivable piece in his head and here if you look um, I have to get my glasses out is the very pipe I'm smoking almost life-size there it is but they say yeah it was um created by david mcgrain and uh yorgos uh, manesis uh, of james fox with connor palmer and jonathan fields of peterson and it's um individually numbered engraved sterling band engraved bowl now it's actually not apropos of this but another book by Mark Irwin, that I was smoking this pipe. As you know, I love to smoke my pipes and read or reread bits of talking. And um, this is the nearest I think I've got to uh, the pipes that are mentioned uh, towards the end of the Lord of the Rings in The Return of the King, when they visit Bilbo again in, in Rivendell, and he gives uh, Merry and Pip in each a pipe with a decorated silver band and a pearl mouthpiece. Well, this isn't pearl, but it's uh, like amber. Anyway, I was thinking about that because I was browsing again in this magnificent book by Mark Owen, Pipe Smoking in Middle Earth, The Fellowship of the Smoke Ring. And it's very, as he's signed it, for me very kindly. Anyway, um, it's got a wonderful account of how important smoking is in the Lord of the Rings and the various points. And it's got suggestions of what the various pipes might have been like. But it has also a very handy, we have a number of handy appendixes, but this is a concordance which has every mention of pipes, tobaccos and smokers in Tolkien's Middle-earth from The Hobbit right through, all gathered together, including, in fact, the passage I mentioned. Um, Bilbo gives both Merry and Pippin an elven pipe, each adorned with pearl and silver. Bilbo laughed and he produced out of a pocket two beautiful pipes with pearl mouthpieces and bound with fine wrought silver. Think of me when you smoke them, he said. The elves made them for me. But the passage I wanted you to read, I wanted to read to you, some time ago I read to you the lovely bit from the chapter Flotsam and Jetsam when Pippin and Merry are resting, as it were, on the ruins of, of Orthanc of, of, uh, of Isengard and they find Saruman's secret stash of long bottom leaf and they're enjoying their pipes. And it's a wonderful scene of not quite comic relief, but nearly. It's a kind of simple thing in the midst of the great grandeur of the epic battles. So here are these two sort of humble hobbits enjoying a simple pleasure. Of course, that's part of the whole point of the book, because in a sense, the war is in defence of the simple pleasures. It's so that the Shire can go on being the Shire. Anyway, there's a lovely scene later on when, again, after the battle, but this time the really major battles in the third book, the hobbits are recovering and uh, they see Strider, who's now, of course, Aragorn, 
the king. And there's a wonderful passage where um, Mary is recovering from the battle and remembering the death of his great friend Theoden, the king, who who to me talked about pipe smoking. And uh, Aragon pretends to be cross with them, but it's really affectionate. And it's um, it's it's all about whether you after a tragedy, you carry on smoking or you think, oh, it's, you know, this is too light a thing to do. And I think it gets right to the heart of some of the things that are going on in the whole legendarium. So I'll read you this passage. Mary ponders giving up pipe smoking while recovering in Gondor. And um, we learn a bit more about pipe weed in this as well. So Mary's just recovering and is well enough to eat food. Then I would like supper first, and after that a pipe. At that his face clouded. No, not a pipe. I, I don't think I'll smoke again. Why not? said Pippin. Well, answered Mary slowly, he is dead. He, of course, is the old and the king. He is dead. It has brought it all back to me. He said he was sorry he had never had a chance of talking herb law with me. Almost the last thing he ever said. I shan't be able to smoke again without thinking of him. And that day, Pippin, when he rode up to Isengard and was so polite. Smoke then and think of him, said Aragorn. For he was a gentle heart and a great king and kept his oaths. And he rose out of the shadows to a last fair morning. Though your service to him was brief, he should be a memory glad and honourable to the end of your days. That's wonderful. Do you notice the, um, he was a great king and kept his oaths? That's almost a direct echo of the passage in um, Beowulf that I read you the other day where Wiglaf and Beowulf are both praised for, for oath-keeping. Mary smiled. Well, then, he said, if Strider will provide what is needed, I will smoke and think. I had some of Saruman's best in my pack, but what became of it in the battle, I'm sure I don't know. Master Meriadoc, I said Aragorn, if you think that I've passed through the mountains and the realm of Gondor with fire and sword to bring herbs to a careless soldier who throws away his gear, you are mistaken. If your pack has not been found, then you must send for the herb master of this house. And he will tell you that he did not know the herb you desired any virtues, but that it was called Westman's Weed by the Vulgar and Galenus by the Noble and other names in other tongues more learned. And after adding a few half-forgotten rhymes that he does not understand, he'll regretfully inform you that there is none in the house and he will leave you to reflect on the history of tongues. Pippin remained behind. Was there ever anyone like him, he said, except Gandalf, of course. I think they must be related. My dear ass, your pack is lying by your bed and you had it on your back when I met you. He saw it all the time, of course. And anyway, I have some stuff of my own. Come on now. Long bottom leaf it is. Fill up while I run about and see some food. And, we and then let's be easy. Dear me, we tooks and brandy bucks. Can't live long on the heights. No, said Mary. I can't. Not yet, at any rate. But at least, Pippin, we can now see them and honour them. But I don't know why I'm talking like this. Where is that leaf? And get my pipe out of my pack, if it isn't broken. I'm sure this constant concern, which goes right back to The Hobbit, when Bilbo actually finds the ring because he's looking around for his pipe and hoping it isn't broken. No. Get my pipe from my pack and let's hope it isn't broken. I'm sure that goes directly back to the Western Front and the Great War and keeping your little pipe and your bits of backy about you in the midst of this unspeakable carnage. Somehow these home comforts root you and ground you again. So I'm grateful to Mark Irwin for sort of putting all these passages together. There's a very fine essay generally about why he thinks that talking chose to wove so much about pipe law into the stories. It's a, it's a must, I think, for anyone who enjoys both talking 
and pipes making, and I found that those things go together. Talking about home comforts, I've got a very nice pipe. pipe I read to you about dragons the other day. This is the this mug is from the Norwich and Norfolk campaign for real ale. Camera, it's from the Norfolk Festival. I think they always have a green dragon enjoying what looks like a pint of porter there, and this is indeed a pint of local local porter ale, and very good it is too. Anyway, I'm glad to be to be back in my own. Uh, little, I just as Wilbur so often wished, in front of my fire and with my pipe, and I'm glad you were able to join me again. And uh, so, like Pippin and Mary, perhaps we'll have a a gentle smoke together and uh, relax. Thanks for coming round. <laughs>